So the OK Grow guys are longtime Meteor veterans. Uh, they recently joined the Meteor Prime program, um, which makes them a very exclusive partner of ours. They hail from Toronto, Canada, even though Ben's from Chicago. 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 Um, so they've traveled a long way to come hang out at MDG headquarters, and we appreciate it. Um, you may also recognize Ben from uh, the Transmission podcast. So he's the co-host of that, if you guys have been following that uh, on YouTube or via our podcast. And you guys have a, a very fun and uh, humorous talk, I think, planned uh, as we walk the history of the Meteor framework uh, pre-1.0 to the most recent uh, 1.3 release and beyond. So looking forward to some laughs and also your insights. Applause for these guys. Except, except we've got a technical problem. I think something's dead here. OK, it's rebooting. So uh, you know what, I'll just, I'll just introduce ourselves while it's rebooting. Uh, I'm Paul Dowman. This is Ben Strahan. Um, we're from OK Grow. OK Grow is a meteor. Uh, consultancy. We build great products with Meteor for clients. We help teams with existing Meteor apps work on their apps. Um, and we do training. And so we recently updated our training material to um, Meteor 1.3 and React. So we've been doing training for two years. It'll be two years next month since we first did the very first version of this course. And we've refactored the same app all the way through from version 0 0.8 to 1.3. So um, that, was, that was two years of uh, refactoring to meet pretty much every different version and every change in, in the community's idea of best practices. Mm -hmm. Very cool. OK, so what that was supposed to be was that we are boring developers, and so we need help entertaining you guys. And so Jean-Luc was going to help us. So Picard's going to help us be entertaining while we give this talk. Most of the stuff, if you guys are experienced with Meteor, like you're going to already kind of see what we're talking about here, and you've already like lived this with us. So this is kind of like a trip down memory lane to have fun, because Meteor is fun. And, and I love developing with Meteor. And upgrading, even though there's been a lot of upgrades and uh, best practices have changed pretty rapidly, it's been fun to do that. So. Let's have fun to like, kind of think about it for a little bit. First, I wanted to talk about app structure. And yes, it's boring, but this was exciting. This is what got all of us like, really hooked at first, is like, it was super simple to write an app. Every, you have your client code and your server code right there. And everyone had a single client folder, a single server folder. Everything was global. And you would throw all your routes in one file. You'd throw all your publications in one file. And that was amazing. And the magic was amazing. And it would work. And you're like, oh my gosh, I am a killer developer. No. <laughs> so let's see if we can like, impress Picard here. So we tried to like, move a little bit more to the professional way. And so in our 1.0 class, we moved to like, a feature kind of structure where we wanted to kind of be modular. But it was a modular wannabe, because still everything was global. Uh, but now we like, got more familiar with like, the Meteor stack and everything. We found out we can have multiple client folders. We can have multiple server folders. We don't, we're not locked into one. And it was a misconception even I had when I first started. And finding that I, like, actually reading the docs was helpful. So I started reading that, and it was good. Multiple lib folders. Uh, and it was fun. Now all of a sudden, you, could, you guys can see like, how it was broken out by feature. Uh, and now you have multiple route file files. You have multiple uh, publication files. And things are making sense. It's easier to, be to develop, to pass on to people, to break out. Oh, that's wonderful. That is wonderful that he's getting happy. I am happy too. And then Ben Newman came along, and I became amazed and super happy because his name is Ben. And he was doing some cool stuff at Meteor. Uh, and one thing was is that he helped us go to ES 2015. And one of the benefits was ES 2015 module support. And it was amazing. So now we have the imports folder, another special folder. But this folder is probably one of the most special ones that I enjoy the most. Because now we have true module support. And now it's a true joy to really develop and at the same time call myself a professional developer. And Jean-Luc likes it a lot. He likes it a real lot. And that's kind of freaky, so we're going to move on to the next one. 
The next one's routing. So routing is something that, that's been really interesting to the community all the way through the history of Meteor. So thinking back to the very beginning was Iron Router. So when I started using Meteor back in version, uh, well, actually, we started with 0 0.6, but our, our first class was, was uh, done with Meteor 0 0.8. And so Iron Router was really the only choice, and it was what everybody used. And as you can see, it, it did a lot of stuff for you. It was really awesome. So here you can see from this code snippet, it is, uh, it's, it's loading our data for us. It's subscribing to our publications. It's, preparing, it's loading the data with a query from the client-side cache, making that available for the, for the templates. Um, and that, that was amazing. So that was really cool. Then along came Flow Router. And this was about, uh, about the time that Meteor 1.1 came out. And I think it was Meteor 1.1 that, that introduced um, uh, session template level subscriptions. And so uh, Flow Router did a lot less. Well, one of the reasons why people liked it was it had a more minimalist design and a little bit more modular. But mostly it did less actually for you. So it did not load the data for you. It let your templates take care of that. That was a good thing because you define what you need closer to where you need it. Um, that, was, that was great. So not just cool. That was seriously coolio. coolio. <laughs> All right. But now, in, in the, our newest version of the class with 1.3, um, the world of NPM is now open to us. You can use any of the 4,542 routers on, on NPM. <laughs> I, I don't recommend it. But there are some good ones, and we're actually using React Router. So that's an example of something that would have been a little bit more difficult to do before. Yes. We love JSX. Oh. So does John so Luke. So does John Luke. Yes. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> All right. So like the view layer. So that, that's the next thing that we're going to talk about. So forever, we have been in a love affair with Blaze. It just was so nice to work with, super easy, super friendly. I think this is what attracted a lot of entry-level developers to come to Meteor, saw all the magic that it did, but also they weren't intimidated, because Blaze was not intimidating. If you had some front-end knowledge of basic HTML and CSS, now you can get going with, this, with Blaze, and it was like very friendly. Um, I think we have to attribute a lot of Meteor's initial success uh, to how well like the view lay layer was handled. And also, that was like a technical feat because like React wasn't around, you know? And so that was, that was huge. So we love it. It was easy. It was powerful. The API was amazing. Yes, John <laughs> Luke, thank you. And then 1.3 came around. Uh, and React and Angular became first class citizens. Or they, it was earlier than that, but anyway. 1.3 is when we decided to really go for it. And that's also when they were recommending installing through NPM instead of, uh, you know, kind of like our own package through Atmosphere. And React is amazing. React is great. You know, the integration is great. The community is even better. Uh, Facebook is amazing for supporting this and pushing it forward. The lifecycle hooks are great. Like, now you got really deep integration. Uh, Hooking it up with jQuery plugins is interesting. It's fun. Uh, but the performance is also amazing, too. I remember I got kind of hooked on React when I was watching them at like a famous meetup. And they, they like matched famous and React together. And all of a sudden, they're like, I th we think we got the most performant everything. And Steve Newcomb was like silent. He's like, no, mine is more performant. But no, I was like, all right, so I'll check out React. And there I am. And then now, see where the cards fell. So I'm just saying. Anyway, you know, and when everything's great, Jean-Luc is happy. And we like seeing him dance. Now, 1.4, like now we've got to be planning for 1.4. So like, I'm curious, maybe that should be Angular? I'm, I'm interested. So who, who loves Blaze in here? Awesome. OK. Who uses React right now? Awesome. Who loves that there's Angular support? Interesting. Interesting. I heard the enterprise loved it, loves it, and I heard there's a lot of money in the enterprise, so I don't know. It could be interesting. Okay. Thank you for that. Next is data management. 
So this is something that hasn't been really, really vocal on, on the forums or anything else, but it's something that really has changed quite a bit since the time that I started with Meteor. And we brought a pro to help. So um, when I first started with Meteor, one of the things that I really, really loved about it was that you could kind of pretend that your, that your data was on the client. You could uh, update it in the local Minimongo cache and save it there, and the framework would just take care of syncing it back to the server for you. Uh, that was really awesome. It was really simple. Um, we had the allow and deny rules for, for those of you that, that remember those, or probably some of you are still using them. It was amazing. <laughs> but there was a bit of a security debate that happened. Um, and despite the convenience, I think uh, the idea of best practices has changed. And the problem is that it's very difficult to, to be really sure, especially for the update rules, that, you're, that you've gotten every, every possible um, uh, security scenario handled in your, in your allow and deny rules. So the ideas of best practice have changed, and now it's generally recommended to use Meteor methods to update your data, and that's what we do. Um, it's also a more recognizable pattern. It's, it's kind of for people that are coming to Meteor from other frameworks, it's just a more normal um, way of doing things, making, making what is essentially an API call to the server. Um, and the cool thing is that optimistic UI update still works. So that was one of the things that, that's, that felt really cool about changing it in the data locally, uh, is that your UI would immediately update without having to wait for the round trip to the server. But um, not, not that commonly known, I, I find, is that that still happens with, with Meteor methods. So, so that's awesome. And uh, goodbye, hacker. There we go. But actually, uh, I mean, I, I, should, I should say that it, using methods doesn't solve everything. So just be careful about, uh, for example, passing query, don't construct queries on your client and send them over through your methods, that kind of thing. But, but it's better. Um, and now in 1.3, there is a, an incremental improvement to that, which we really like, which is called validated method. So this is a, um, this is a package. And, and if you haven't seen this, Check out the Meteor Guide article on, on methods. Um, it's just a new way of writing methods where you can, uh, they're a little bit more easily testable. You can mock out things. You can run the validation code by itself. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of uh, the way of doing it now. All right, so we're done. Or are we? Well, I think I'm really looking forward to the next version of this course that we do, which I expect will probably incorporate Apollo. So the cool thing about that is being able to access data from other sources. You heard all about it before that, so we're, we're pretty excited. And you can put, put Apollo into an existing Meteor app, so I think we'll be I'm looking forward to doing that. And so is John Luke. <laughs> Very cool. So that's at the end of our talk, so we ran out of time. But there's some other honorable mentions. There's been huge progress on testing uh, and just the whole process through that, we, we've talked it to death, um, but I love the contributions of Velocity and everyone even before that with the test runners and all that. So testing has always been an interesting thing with Meteor and it's great that now we have a really solid uh, test case for Meteor. Also packages and NPM wrappers and just NPM integration before and like how we had all hacked that together and Atmosphere is filled with like wrapper packages for NPM and all stuff. Uh, and then the whole state management, which is still like changing quite a bit, especially like with the introduction of Redux and all that. And Apollo is going to be kind of pushing that conversation forward too. So too bad we ran out of time. But does it all really matter? No, because the guys that are working on AI are going to make us obsolete. <laughs> and it's futile to resist. But anyway, thank you very much. If you guys are interested in this training, you guys can go to okgrow.com slash training. And uh, we're hiring. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Right, you, you're still going to. Um, yeah, Paul, you want to uh, repeat the question for the stream? I'm sorry. Sure. To repeat the question, uh, what stops somebody from uh, essentially uh, browsing the MiniMongo database on the client and, for example, seeing the list of all the users? Is that, that the question? So. Um, Nothing really has changed with that, which, and, and the, the answer to that is that you, you define your publications on the server side 
to only publish things that are, that are available to whoever the user is. And nothing, nothing has really changed too much about that in, in over the time that I can think of. So yeah, no, there's no security issues, just careful how you define your publications. Does that answer that for you? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.